Good morning. I'm Caleb Breckeisen with the Division of Parks and Watercraft, and I would like to thank you for joining us for what is our second event discussing the Natural Resources Officer Classification. If you missed our first event, a link has been posted in the discussion box and published. Any questions you have can be typed in the Q&A box on the right side of your screen. Today, I'm joined by several officers that graduated from our 2020 cadet class. This group of officers began in February of 2020 and graduated in July of 2020. They were in the academy during the early parts of the COVID pandemic. As a result of COVID, they were put under special precautions and had to spend almost all of their weekends at the academy after a four week shutdown. The goal of today's event is to give you a better understanding of how the process of becoming a natural resources officer works. What you should be prepared for, what you should be prepared for during the process and some tips on how to be better prepared. I'd like to take a moment now to introduce our guests, Officer Emily Kent, Officer Aaron Scott, Officer D'Angelo Thigpen, and Officer John Tyma. We want to start this off with allowing each officer the opportunity to tell us a little bit about themselves. I am Emily Kent. I'm 27 years old and I'm currently stationed at Buck Creek State Park. Um, I'm married. I have two dogs and I graduated from Hawking College. Hi, I'm Erin Scott. I am uh, 24 years old. I'm assigned at East Harbor State Park in the Lake Erie Islands. I was actually able to get this job pretty much straight out of college, so I was really fortunate with the timing there. And I actually just moved up here from more of a Midwest Ohio area. Hi, my name is D'Angelo Thigpen. I'm 29 years old. I am currently assigned to Rocky Fork State Park. I'm married. Uh, I have a two-year-old son, and I graduated from the Ohio State University. Good morning, my name is John Tyma. I'm 36 years old. I have a wife and a stepdaughter. Um, my wife and I have a baby boy on the way, due in June. I'm assigned to East Fork State Park in Southwest Ohio. I have uh, 18 years in the military, five and a half active duty. Uh, the rest has been with the Ohio Army National Guard, uh, split between military police and transportation. So as mentioned earlier, the, the goal of today's session is to give you a better understanding of how the process works and what you can do to be better prepared. So we have some questions that we're going to go through and each officer, it, not every officer is going to answer every question. So we're going to get started with some of our questions. So what drew you to seeking a career as a natural resources officer? Officer Thigpen? Um, I was drawn to the position because it allows me to uh, combine my passion for law enforcement with my love for the outdoors. Um, it kind of seemed like the perfect fit as far as uh, not being stuck in the office and being out, able to go outside and, and be uh, a change in your community. Good, thank you. Officer Scott? Yeah, so... Um very similar to Officer Thigpen. Uh, I've always wanted a job where I could be outdoors, not in an office, behind a desk. In this job, you're always doing something different. Like at East Harbor, I can be on a boat one day. We've got a UTV I patrol on other days, vehicle patrols, foot patrols. So the wide range the job has and the fact that I get to be outdoors all the time just really appealed to me. It was basically exactly what I was wanting to do. Good, thank you. Next question, what were your expectations of the hiring process once you submitted your application? Officer Tyma? My expectations were a little, a little unrealistic. I was hoping to hear back after completing steps within a day or two. Um, that's, just, that's just not possible when you have about 600 folks applying for 20 or 30 open positions. So sometimes it took several weeks without hearing anything from HR about uh, how you did on your results. So I'll tell you to be patient during this time, 
keep you positive, keep preparing for the next steps. Um, I'll let you know a little bit about what my timeline was. So I applied in June of uh, 2019. Um, August uh, 19th, I took the physical fitness test. It was uh, September 13th when I interviewed. Two weeks after the interview, I was told that I passed the interview and um, that I'd be going on to the next step. Um, then you have your uh, your background investigation, which you'll be contacted by an NRO who is assigned to do your background investigation. You'll have to meet with this person. Uh, the interview takes about two hours to go through all your background. From there, uh, you'll have to do a polygraph, psychological testing uh, before you get your conditional letter of employment. Those uh, the polygraph and the psychological testing, I believe they started doing those in about October 2019. Um, being employed full time, it was a little hard to get to the appointments, so I had to schedule those. I had to schedule myself for the later appointments um, for the polygraph and the psychological testing. So I didn't get my conditional letter of employment until December 31st, 2019. Some folks might have got theirs a little earlier if they were able to get to those appointments early on. Uh, after your conditional letter of employment, you'll have to go for uniform fitting um, and you get through a final drug test. Once those come back good, you'll uh, be told when your orientation, our orientation date started on the 3rd of February. Um, I did have a couple of major life event changes during the application process. I changed jobs and I got married. So if you do have any of those events during your application process, be sure to let HR know uh, so they can update your background information. Thank you. We'll stay with Officer Taima. What was the biggest surprise of the hiring process? Uh, so my biggest surprise of the hiring process was what came at, came at the interview. Um, the interview, uh, my interview was uh, three members. There was an HR professional, a lieutenant who's currently my lieutenant in my unit, and one of our investigators. So it's going to be a board style interview. Be prepared for that. Uh, the last thing I was asked to do at the interview was to take 10 minutes and to read the Ohio Boat Operator's Guide, specifically the section on post personal flotation devices. After that 10 minutes, I was to give a five minute presentation on PFDs. Before that day, I couldn't tell you the difference between a type one, two, three, four, or five PFD, but I learned that day. Um, I gave my presentation, they liked it, and here I am today. So that was my biggest surprise. It's just, uh, I never been in an interview before where they told you study for 10 minutes and then give us a presentation. So a little different. Good, thank you. Officer Thigpen. For me, the, the biggest uh, surprise was the assignment process. Um, you had some people that accepted these positions that were from out of state um, and had unrealistic expectations as to where they might go. You uh, you apply for this job, you told, you're told that you get the job and you think you're just going to get your top preference. In reality, you made a list of about 10, um, and some people didn't even get that uh, just due to openings and needs of, a, of the agency. So um, kind of not knowing where you're going to go, I was, a, I was a big surprise for me. Thank you. So next question, did you begin preparing for the fitness and swim test immediately after submitting your application? Officer Taima. My recommendation is that you should have been training already for the fitness test. Um, if, you, if you currently have a training plan, my recommendation is to transition to a maintenance plan. Don't try setting any personal records before the academy. Avoid risk of injury. You just want to get to the academy and get through it. Uh, you won't have access to a fitness center at the academy, so there's no need to build muscle or pack on weight. Uh, a lot of people that went into the academy looking like bodybuilders did say uh, they lost mass and strength. Uh, that's because a lot of the physical fitness you'll do there is just body weight. Uh, so with that being said, the best way, in my opinion, to prepare for the academy is to do body weight exercises such as sit-ups, uh, push-ups, planks. I think we were in a plank position for about 20 to 30 minutes a day, not all at the same time, but throughout the day. You know, you'll spend about 20, 30 minutes in the plank. Uh, flutter kicks are good. Uh, you'll do lunges, air squats. You'll do squat and holds, uh, which is what seems like forever. Um, those are good things to practice. As far as cardio goes, you'll do some uh, some long distance running, uh, steady state cardio. Um, so practice that. I'd also say practice sprints and high intensity interval training. Uh, if you practice those things and you do your body weight exercises, you'll be in good shape for the academy. 
Thank you. Officer Kent. Yeah, so kind of the piggyback off Tima, um, it's really just important to uh, have a good, healthy fitness routine in general. Um, I uh, applied back in 2016 and went through the process and I didn't make it past the interview phase. Um, and I was devastated, but I think I know back then that I wasn't really um, ready. Uh, I kind of just threw myself into lifting and working out and gaining experience throughout the last few years to the point where it's like I had the mindset of when that uh, position did become back open, I was going to be ready for it. Um, so yeah, just kind of like I said, just having a healthy fitness routine in general is good for um, the job. You're going to need it throughout your entire career. Thank you. How did you prepare for the interview? Officer Tima? So preparing for the interview, uh, you want to review the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Parks and Watercraft websites. If you go to dnr.gov, uh, there's a section for Parks and Watercraft. Scroll down a little bit, there's a tab for becoming an NRO. Uh, right next to that, you'll see a section on personal flotation devices. Maybe they're telling you something there, maybe they're not, I don't, I don't know. Um, but those are some good resources for you to review. Uh, review the job description. I uh, looked over the job description again on the original application I submitted. And I looked at my resume and then I tried to relate some personal experiences to the job. Just kind of just kind of prepare yourself for what kind of questions you might get asked because you know you're going to get asked about your strengths and weaknesses. You're going to get asked about when you were faced with a difficult situation and what did you do. Uh, how did you handle disagreements with coworkers or with uh, customers? You'll be asked these types of questions. So just research interview questions, come up with answers and practice practice speaking to them in yourself or in the mirror or with somebody else to help you ask you those questions. Um, you can want to wear your suit or your, your best out there. You want to look the part. So what I did is I dry clean and I did a test fit in my suit well in advance to make sure I could still fit in it. So that's an important thing there. Uh, fresh haircut. Um, Bring a pen and paper, and the reason why you want to do that is not only so you can take notes at the end, because some of the questions you're going to get asked have multiple parts to them. So if you're taking notes on the questions, uh, as you're answering, you can look at your notes and make sure you're answering the question completely so you can maximize your points and your score at your interview. Uh, eat breakfast before you go. You might want to bring a snack and some water with you. I'm not telling you to pack a lunch, just maybe a little bag of trail mix or beef jerky you can fit in your pocket. Um, but my interview process did go pretty quick. I was I was in and out of the building in about an hour and a half. The interview lasted about an hour, so I guess not not too not too bad. Good, thank you, Officer Scott. Yeah, um, coming up and go off what Officer Time was saying. I'd also agree. You know, learn as much as you can about the job itself. Um, you should also reflect on the life experiences you've had, be able to relate them to those questions like Officer Time was talking about. Um, listen very carefully to the questions they are asking you. That way you can answer them fully. Don't assume anything. Don't skip any details. Be very detailed in your answers. Um, I'd also recommend reflect on your own ideals, how you what you feel is right and wrong, your set of morals and ethics know how you feel about that kind of stuff be able to apply those to different situations or scenarios you might be asked about and apply those to your answers and then and i'd also recommend it's normal to be nervous for your interview interviews find a way that works for you to calm down and relax uh, that can be anything just taking some deep breaths before you go in just find a way that helps you relax a little bit that way you can project that calmness and that confidence when you're doing your interviews Good, thank you. Those were very good points from both. Next question, what recommendations would you make to an interested applicant about the hiring process? Officer Kent? I would say um, for the most part, just to be honest, um, be yourself, as corny as that kind of sounds. Um, be patient in the process. The process is going to be lengthy. I mean, it just it is what it is and um, 
try to be best prepared as you can, uh, having as much information that you can going into it for um, your background officer, um, having copies of transcripts and diplomas and any certificates that you may have collected throughout your career. Um, yeah, I mean, just trying to keep a good attitude throughout the entire process. Thank you. Officer Thigpen? Uh, yeah, to piggyback off the honesty, I think the biggest part is to be transparent during the entire hiring process. Um, the last thing you want to do is is make it deep into this process and have something from your past come up and eliminate you from the hiring process. So uh, when you speak to your background investigators or put down your references or anything that's that is important in the agency knowing, uh, disclose that up front and, and get that aired out before it comes back to, to kind of bite you in your butt. Good. Okay, so we're going to shift questions a little bit and we're going to uh, look at the academy experience itself. So next question, what were your expect expectations prior to arrival at the State Highway Patrol Academy? Officer Scott. So honestly, I had no idea what to expect going into it. I expected a lot of yelling, getting smokes and doing a lot of PT. Past that, I was really clueless. I came into it pretty blind, so I had a lot to learn coming in. Officer Kent. Yeah, I mean, um, I kind of expected it to be strict, maybe a little bit of military-like experience. Um, I knew that it was going to be difficult, but I mean, nothing worth having or worth having comes easy. So. Um, other than that, I really came into it blind as well. Um, just kind of going with the flow. And Officer Taima? I was expecting it to be a lot like basic training, and it really wasn't that bad. Uh, you're going to do a lot of standing around and then get told to run here, go there. You're in the wrong place. Day one is going to be the duffel bag shuffle. But after you get settled in and they get you into a routine, you learn the expectations and life becomes easier. Uh, if you're not sure if something's allowed in the academy, you'll be given a packing list, but if you're not sure if you're allowed to bring something into the academy like a foot powder or, or a multivitamin, um, allergy pills or anything like that, um, bring it with you, but just leave it in your car until you can get clarification from the cadre if it's allowed in or not. Um, so those are my recommendations on my expectations. But, uh, yeah, it's really it's not basic training. It's, it's not buds. You know, it's basic peace officer training academy. And you guys can do it. Thank you. A follow up question for Officer Scott. What is getting smoked? So getting smoked is basically when you or your, one of your classmates has done something wrong, made a mistake, it's corrective PT. So you're going to be in a front laying rest position, plank position, and it's just going to be a couple minutes of getting some extra exercise. Thank you. Next question. What did you do to prepare for the academy? Officer Thigpen. So going into the academy, um, I obviously had a wife, I had a young son at home. Um, it was important for me to set up a support system for my family. Um, luckily, uh, my in-laws are close, so my wife had support there. Um, exercising for the academy, kind of like uh, Tyma said, want to make sure that you're nursing any injuries or, or not hurting yourself going into it. And then uh, one of the big things I did was try to mentally prepare myself. I don't have a military background um, so going into that environment I figured would be tough for me um, so I reached out to resources like the Joe, Ro Joe Rogan podcast or um, I actually read uh, Can't Break Me by David Goggins um, to kind of get myself in the mindset that that I can face adversity and that um, I can kind of push myself through some of the more difficult times I, I 
playing to, to, to base. Thank you. Officer Kent. I honestly, I, I probably Googled as much as I possibly could about the Academy, seeing what I could find out. Um, I I had to YouTube a lot of how to do my hair, and I'd probably never done a bun before in my life, and uh, I'd probably suggest a lot of hair gel, um, hair pins, hair clips, hair ties. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's not fun to um, have to have your hair tied back as tight as you possibly can, but it's definitely um, something that you're going to have to learn and have to do. Um, I ended up having to shave the bottom half of my hair. Um, it just wasn't worth it having it touch your collar throughout the academy, so um, it's not that bad. It, it, um, it's, it's just something that you have to get through in a, a short period of your life. Um, other than that, just um, keeping up with PT and uh, getting ready for it that way. But. Thank you. Officer Tyma. Uh, so you may want to prepare your family and your affairs at home. If you have any kind of major life events coming up, like if you're buying or selling a home, uh, my wife and I had to sell both our houses and buy another one. Uh, we went from Athens County to Claremont County. So I uh, just had to set up uh, some power of attorneys so she can sign in my absence. So if you have any similar situations, if you have any utilities that are expiring or if your lease is going to expire while you're at the academy, you might want to consider setting up a power of attorney so someone can handle that affair in your absence. Um, you're only going to be allowed to use your phone for about 30 minutes every night for uh, the first several weeks. So make sure they know that going into it. You're only going to be able to talk to them for about half an hour at a time. Um, again, you do have the potential of long stays, like uh, Lieutenant Breck has said in the beginning. We were there for most weekends. So if that does happen, you might want to consider who's going to cut your grass in your absence, uh, who's going to pay your bills, you know, who's going to take care of your animals for an extended period of time. Uh, things of that such. You may want to test your family's ability to operate without you. I had a, I had a buddy in the academy and he, he mentioned that um, early on the first couple weeks that he wasn't too sure if he was going to stick with it or not because it was just too hard on his family. So you may want to test your family's ability to operate in your absence, how, they, how your kids going to behave, um, who's going to pick up your chores in your absence. Um, and then the other thing I would recommend is learning uh, learning the Bill of Rights before you go in there. Those first 10 amendments to the Constitution are going to help you out. Those are pretty fundamental in law enforcement. Uh, I wouldn't say immerse yourself in ORC or OAC. Uh, you'll only be given a fraction of what's out there in the academy, so it's not worth trying to wrap your head around all the ORCs. But uh, definitely, if you've got a good understanding of the Bill of Rights going in, you will be in a better position. Good, thank you. So we did have a question come in um, and I went ahead and published it. Where is the State Ohio Patrol Academy located? Uh, it is located in Columbus, Ohio. So that, that question uh, came in and has been published. So going to our next question, what do you wish someone would have told you prior to your arrival at the Academy? Officer Scott. So there are a couple things I would have wanted to know. Uh, one of the first things is one of the most important things to the academy is teamwork and, and communication. We got hung up a couple times because of poor communication or poor teamwork. You're better off being wrong as a team together than having a few individuals going off their own separate way and being right. That's going to go a lot worse. It's better off to be as a, to stay as a team and do everything as a team and make sure you help each other out. If someone's falling behind or they're slower, you need to help them catch up. you got to be ready as a team. It's a team effort. Everyone makes it through together. Um, again, keep working out. Once you pass your PT test for the interviews, don't just stop working out. Like time I said, keep working out. Focus on that body weight and your core. And then one of the things, it would take our class a really long time to make fairly simple decisions. 
the uh, instructors of the academy will assign actual class leadership. So you'll have class sergeants and a class lieutenant each week. Listen to the leadership that's assigned for that week. Let them make some of the more minimal decisions. That way you don't have an entire class argument just trying to make simpler decisions. And it does get easier as you go. You get you start falling into the rhythm, you adapt to it, and the academy itself starts to get a little bit easier as you keep going. So just stick with it. It will get better once you're going through. Thank you. Officer Thigpen. Uh, I kind of wish I would have known that like everything that takes place in the academy has a purpose. Um, when you first get there, uh, it's kind of overwhelming if you've never been in that environment. And you're sometimes going to question why the troopers have you doing certain things. Um, just know that everything that takes place in that academy translates to the job. So whether it's making sure your, your rack is uh, made uh, with the perfect corners and you can bounce a quarter off of it or that there's no dust, like those details do translate to the job. Um, so just kind of keep an open mind when you're given some of these tasks that you might think at the time aren't that important. Good advice from both. Thank you. Describe your first day at the academy. Officer Taima. Well, we got to the academy. Uh, we, we were out in a parking lot for probably about an hour before we were allowed into the building. So uh, with that being said, before you get there, make sure you stop off and use the bathroom. It might be a little while before you see a latrine again. Um, after that, you're allowed into the building and you sign in and everybody's all nice, nice, just getting you where you need to be getting you in line with your bags. Uh, then you make an announcement and they say they're going to open the doors. And when you open the doors, the academy starts. And that's when that's when the troopers start coming at you, yelling and hollering and telling you to get here, get there as fast as you can with all your bags you're bringing in with you. So think about the bags you want to bring with you. Maybe consider a duffel bag, something with shoulder straps that you can just sling real quick and run down a hallway with. Uh, you don't want to be running around with three, four, five, six bags, you know, in your hands. Uh, so make that a little bit easier on yourself. Um, after that, we were basically just shuffled around the building for a bit. Uh, we were put in our rooms. We were told to change clothes. Uh, we had an introduction to staff. Um, the rest was kind of a blur after that. It was just a, a lot of yelling and running, moving around as fast as you can. So. Thank you. Officer Scott. So the first day, it's for me, it was the most difficult, difficult day at the academy. It's very stressful. You're doing a lot of exercise. There's a lot of running around. It's pretty chaotic. The thing that helped me the most while I was through the academy is just to take it one step at a time. I knew the first day was going to be the worst, and I kept reminding myself that once I make it through that first day, I can make it through that first week. The first week is basically the worst week after that first day. So I know once I make it through that first week, I can make it through the whole academy. So break it down in those chunks and those small goals. Take it week by week, day by day. If you have to even just take it hour by hour, it does get better. Once you make it through that worst part, you can make it through the rest. It just takes some determination. Um, that thought process and just reminding myself that, that I've already made it through the worst part, that really helped me get through it. And I thought that was really helpful. Good, thank you. Officer Thigpen. So for the best way to sum up the first day is organized chaos. Um, the troopers obviously know what they're doing. Uh, like uh, Jonathan said, you're gonna be running around. Um, people are gonna be yelling. You're not gonna know what to do. You're going to make mistakes. Um, everyone's going to make mistakes, so don't kind of harp on yourself. Um, kind of listen to what the troopers are actually saying. Like they're going to be yelling at you, but try to hear what they're saying. Look for the little details. Uh, my first day, like we're sent to our rooms, told to change to our blues, and your blues are going to be like your everyday dress, dress shirt, tie, your slacks, and your dress shoes. Uh, me and my roommate put on PT gear because the shirts were blue and we were panting um, and we came out and we had to do PT in the hallway. 
So kind of listen to what's being said to you. Um, kind of like uh, Scott said, uh, take it one day at a time. Understand that that's probably going to be the roughest day. Um, what's funny is you can actually see photos of our first day, I believe on the state patrol website they have our photos there so if you kind of want to see what it looks like for new hire or uh, new basics to go in on that first day um you can you can check that out but it's just organized chaos it'll be over before you know it um, and you kind of don't remember a lot of it once you're you're done with it because it's it does become a bar thank you so next question, how did you prepare for testing while in the academy? So how did you prepare for testing while in the academy? Officer Scott? And elaborate on what testing you're talking about as well. Right, so basically we have at the very end of the academy, when you're done, you have the state exam. And then throughout the academy, you've got different tests, just like a school, midterm, quarterly tests, stuff like that. Um, when you're in the academy, your lectures and notes are going to be focused around student performance objectives, aka SPOs. When you're taking your notes, try to get these as word for word as possible because the tests in the academy and the state exam will be pretty specific on some of that wording. Focus all of your studying efforts on those SPOs. That is the only thing the academy will test and it's the only thing the state exam covers. Uh, the thing I did to help me study was I made a lot of flashcards. I would make one, sometimes multiple flashcards for each of those student performance objectives. Uh, just the act of making those flashcards actually helped me study because I was rewriting everything down. It also helped me for the state exam because I already had all of those flashcards made. So once I was out of the academy, you've got a couple weeks usually from the end of the academy until your state exam. So I could use those couple weeks with those flashcards I already made to review them. So mostly the academic testing that's how I did it, which is flashcards and really focusing on those SPOs. Thank you. So after the first day, how long before the group settled and was not making as many mistakes? Officer Kent. So I would say um, we had a rather large group, um, so it makes communicating a little bit harder, I think, with the more um, cadets that are in your uh, class. But once everybody started realizing um, that it was more important to look out for each other than ourselves, and once we started working more as a, as a team and um, trying to um, just kind of keep an eye out on each other and stuff like that. Things got a lot better. Probably, um, I don't know, week, week four or five, I think, um, things got a lot better and we all started getting along a lot better. Good, thank you. Officer Scott? So, uh, yeah, I would agree with uh, Officer Kent. It does slowly start to get better week by week as you start to acclimate. Um, it really did seem like about week four or five, we started to click and our class kind of started to get our act together. We figured each other out how we were going to do things. So that made for a lot less mistakes. We were able to make decisions better. It generally just seemed to get a lot better week four or five and we started kind of figuring everything out. Um, just remember, don't take mistakes each other makes personally. Don't beat yourself down over your mistakes and don't beat your classmates down over their mistakes either. It doesn't help anything. You gotta just stick together and keep as a team. Once we figured that out, it got a lot better. Good advice. So next question, what was the best day at the academy? Officer Thigpen. In, in my opinion, um, the day we all passed our, our final PT test was, uh, was a huge day. Um, going into the academy, everyone's not in the same shape. 
Uh, like you have some people that might be really good runners, but may struggle when it comes to their core work. Or do you have some people that just struggle in all areas? Um, once you get near the end of the academy, you actually start to, to care about your classmates and you want to see them be successful. Um, near the end of our academy, we had a few individuals that suffered injuries, um, whether it be an ankle or a knee. Um, so the day that we all passed our final PT, um, kind of with flying colors, uh, it was a huge, huge relief and just like a, a really like exciting, glorious moment. Officer Scott. Uh, yeah, so I would agree with Officer Thigpen on that PT day. That was a really big day for us. We were basically all in the parking lot, screaming, yelling, celebrating, cheering each other on. That was a lot of fun. Um, I also really enjoyed the firearms and driving weeks for the actual instruction. We actually got to get out of the academy building. Um, when we're doing that, it's more practical stuff. So the instructor was a little more relaxed with us. So we could actually kind of relax and have a little more fun. It's also you just get to do more of that hands on stuff. So I really enjoyed the weeks like that. Thank you. Officer Kent. I would say um, probably one of the best days, I think, in my opinion, would be the speed measurement device week. Uh, we had officers come in from other agencies and got into groups and went out off campus and um, got to test out the radars and lidars. And they took us out to lunch, which was exciting to have a little bit of different uh, food added into our week. Um, so I would say that was probably one of my favorite days. Good, thank you. Officer Tyma. I don't recall having uh, just one best day. There were a lot of good days at the academy. Uh, I'm a morning person to begin with, so getting up in the morning, starting my day doing PT is usually what I do. Uh, so that's always a good start to my day, getting that out of the way. Um, Fridays were pretty good days when you know you get to go home that night. You know, you just uh, you get out there, you do your run, you got the morning air um, with all your classmates. And you just you know you're counting down the hours to go home and you're getting paid to be there you know um, i really didn't enjoy my job before going into the academy so every day at the academy was better than my prior job but, uh, so yeah you're gonna have a lot of good days uh, i don't think i have one that was just the best days so. good all right and what was the worst day at the academy officer scott I honestly felt like day one of the academy for me was the worst day. It was the overall most stressful, most difficult day. So once you've gotten through that day, you really have made it through the worst of it. You can make it through the rest of it. It does slowly start getting better. You might have a couple bad days mixed here and there where you guys might have messed up and it's just not going to be a good day for you. But like Tima said, there are a lot of other good days where you genuinely do have fun and enjoy yourself at the academy. Uh, and this job makes up for those bad days. It just takes some willpower to make it through, and you guys can absolutely do it. Good, thank you. So I have one follow-up question, and this is for Officer Tima, um, and it was in conversation we had. So if somebody has a dietary restriction, what would you recommend they do, Officer Tima? We, we did have folks in the academy that had dietary restrictions. So it was a legitimate dietary restriction. Uh, so what they did is they talked with their agency uh, well in advance prior to going to the academy. Uh, their agency was able to coordinate with the academy staff so that individual could bring their own food in. Uh, the individual would meal prep in advance, bring their food in on Sunday night or Monday. Uh, they would eat with us at the same time as their meals would be stored in the, uh, the refrigerators that the dining facility staff use. So if you do have a dietary restriction, bring it up to your agency as soon as possible so they can start making arrangements for you. Even when we were there for extended period of time, for three or four weeks at a time, uh, that person was still allowed to bring their food in. They would just have a, one of their family members would do the prep work for them and then bring their, their meals uh, a couple times each week so they'd stay fresh. So the academy will accommodate you if you do have a separate uh, a specific dietary restriction. Good, thank you. So those are the questions that we had uh, prepared and we have uh, 
a few questions that have come in in the Q and A. But before I go to the Q and A, uh, the officers that are joining me, do you have anything that we didn't touch on that you would like to uh, discuss? Okay, good. Thank you. So, first question: What is involved in the probationary period? So, who would like to tackle that one? Or would you like me to answer it? I can take right. this of it. Go ahead, Scott. Officer Scott. So basically, once you get out of the academy and you move from cadet status to officer status or probationary natural natural resource officer status, that probationary period basically resets. So from that day, you have a year that you're on probation. Most of that year, you're going to be in your field training. So you're going to be a field training officer at that time, basically learning the job. After that year, you're then off of your probation and you'll be just a full natural resource officer. You will no longer be on probation then. Uh, you get a probationary review before the end of it. You get a mid probationary review where your lieutenant's just kind of checking in and let you know how you're doing, giving you those uh, uh, evaluations. Good. Thank you, Officer Scott. Um, and to add to that, with this being uh, a group that came out during COVID, we typically do a five to six week Natural Resources Officer Academy. And with COVID, we were restricted on the amount of travel that we can do. So typically, um, when a class comes out, we would do spe agency specific training. Um, and a lot of that, this with these folks was pushed to the field um, to accomplish that. And we're still trying to work through some of that. So just to elaborate on a little bit. Um, next question that came in, did any of you get assigned to your preferred location? So Officer Thigpen, Officer so, Scott, and Officer Kent were assigned to their preferred location. Officer Tyma was not. Officer Tyma, right. what? Oh, I'm sorry, Officer Thigpen, what did you say? So I actually wasn't assigned to my preferred, but I got the park I actually wanted. So I was offered a different park. Um, I was offered a park maybe 30 minutes away from me. I actually wanted the park about 40 minutes away from me. So it kind of worked out in my favor um, at like the change of assignments. Um, it wasn't my preferred uh, initially, but it worked out actually. This park is much better than, than the last one. Uh, just bigger piece of water and I'm, I'm a water guy, so. Good, thank you. Officer Tyma. Uh, so I just looked at areas around Southeast Ohio. Unfortunately, none of them were available. So I was offered um, Southwest Ohio at East Fork State Park, which is about two hours from where we were living. So uh, like I said earlier, my wife and I, we each had to sell our houses and then uh, buy a uh, new house over here in uh, Claremont County. Um, again, just understand you're applying for a statewide job. It's, it's, it's you're not, you're listing your preferences and the agency will try to accommodate you, but if not, they're gonna try and get you as close as they can. In my situation, it was two hours away. Uh, just understand you are applying for a statewide employment, so you may be asked to relocate. Good, thank you. Okay, we don't currently have any new questions in the Q&A. Uh, we'll give it a few minutes before um, we wrap this up. Okay, um, nothing's coming in. So again, I would like to thank all of the officers, Officer Tyma, Officer Kent, Officer Thigpen, Officer Scott for joining me today. Um, you did a great job presenting and I greatly appreciate it. And I hope everybody that is tuning in or might watch this in the future, um, learned a little bit more about the process and what to expect as they go through it. So I thank you and we are gonna wrap this up. So again, I thank you. And if you are interested in applying, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, question came in. Do you work at a single park or do you work a region? 
Officer Scott. So you're basically, you're going to be assigned to a work unit. So that's going to be more of a region in Ohio. Your main report to location will be a single park. So for me, example, I report to East Harbor State Park. That's the single park I report to, but I work an entire region that covers the Lake Erie Islands. So I'll go and work South Bass Island, Kelly's Island, East Harbor. Uh, there'll be certain nature preserves you'll cover, certain forestry properties you'll cover. So you work that whole region, but you'll normally report to one park. Good, thank you, Officer Thigpen. To, to give an example of someone who kind of works off the lake, um, I report to Rocky Fork State Park, but I also patrol um, Claremont County, uh, Brown County, Adams County, um, a little bit of Ross County, and obviously Highland County, um, all the nature preserves, uh, your state uh, parks. Um, so you you are based out of out of one, I guess, re report to you, state park. But your day could be spent on the Ohio River, or you could be in um, Rush Creek State Forest. Or so your day to day kind of varies depend, depending on the need, the time of the year, um, and uh, the recreation level of that area. Thank you, Officer Kent, Officer Ta Officer Tima. Either of you would like to chime in. Okay, Officer Kent. Yeah, so I mainly go to um, Buck Creek State Park, but um, I have the option to report to Grand Lake St. Mary's and Lake Loramie State Park as well. Um, and we um, do like the Great Miami River, um, the canals up north, and there's a lot of uh, land to cover. Then people realize it's not you're not just staying in one spot at a time there's a lot to do officer timer so i'm assigned to east fork state park in unit c of the southwest district uh d'angelo thickman and i are also in the same unit he just has the uh the eastern half of the parks um so at east fork we cover stone lake uh, we also cover parts of the Ohio River and other parts of Hamilton County. So in Hamilton County, you have uh, the Little Miami River. Um, you have white water out there. So the folks that like to paddle that, we're out there um, enforcing those areas, um, as well as uh, things on the Ohio River. Um, and again, East Fork State Park and Stone Lake State Park. Good, thank you. So another question. So I think some people touched on this, but how did you deal with the stress and anticipation of waiting to hear back during the stages of the hiring process. I have a family, full-time job, and a full-time class schedule. How did you balance the stress that life brings along with waiting to hear back? Mr. Th or Officer Thickpen? Uh, my advice is just to, to find a, a healthy outlet. Um, exercise is probably the best thing. Uh, it, not, it not only transfers over to if you do uh, get selected and you have to get into the academy or, or get to the academy, but um, just finding something that's a healthy way to, to kind of blow off some steam. That way you're not affecting your current job or your family and, and bringing that stress home. Good, thank you. What is your typical day like as a natural resources officer? Officer Scott? So it's actually kind of hard to answer what an exact typical day is because your schedule and your days will vary so much, uh, especially in the summer. There'll be weeks, at least at East Harbor, it's going to be different depending on the area you're in. But there'll be days where you can go out and you'll do a watercraft patrol all day, half the day, anything like that. Um, up at East Harbor on the weekends, we'll have a team go up to the islands and they'll patrol the islands over the weekends at South Bass Island and Kelly's Island. We'll also have another team that stays at East Harbor. Uh, you'll start your shift, you'll go out and patrol, you'll check the campgrounds, check with people at the check-in station, make sure everything's okay. It's quite the campgrounds, you might go out and go check some of your preserves, you might go check some of your boat ramps. So 
your day really varies a lot. Um, day to day, you don't do the same thing all the time. So it's hard to really give a typical day. There's a lot you can be doing. So would anybody like to add to that? Officer Thickpen? Um, to kind of piggyback off of what uh, Officer Scott said, um, your days vary. Um, in my case, my FTO is actually a canine handler, so my assignments aren't like your typical patrol. Um, your schedule kind of fluctuates with uh, visitor uh, visitation, like how. So if your, your campers are coming in Thursday, Friday, you might work later that night. Um, with the canine, you get called to, to assist other agencies. So I find that we work with our sheriff's office more frequently than most, um, or we get called down to some of the larger events like uh, the killing power station collapse. Um, so your, your day to days uh, aren't, aren't typical. I wouldn't plan on a set schedule. Um, it slows down in the winter just because you have less uh, visitors in the park, but your schedule typically um, can get chaotic a little bit. Um, so that's something maybe your, your family should know. I, I know my wife didn't necessarily know that off the off the back, but she's adjusted well to it. Um, as, lo as, as long as they understand that this is your passion, um, you'll be fine. You won't have an issue with that. But like a typical work day, uh, you don't get that here. Every, every day is going to be different and it's fun. It's, it's, it's enjoyable. Uh, patrolling the state forest one day and then uh, patrolling the Ohio River the next and then finding yourself uh, in a campground talking to people. That's a large, por large portion of this job is, is being able to communicate. Um, we're here to, to, to service these people, uh, the, the visitors of the parks and to provide a service. Um, so getting out and communicating with people, um, seeing the kids play around the park, it's, it's a very enjoyable job. So, Good, thank you. So next question, what are some of the polygraph questions? <laughs> Shaking their heads, laughing. Officer Tyma, go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, I can't remember all the polygraph questions, but it really wasn't that bad of a process. I think I was in and out of there maybe about half an hour, 45 minutes at the most. You're going to know the questions they ask you before going in there. You're going to see those questions in advance on your background question, uh, background questionnaire. And that's basically what they're doing in the polygraph. They're checking your uh, your your truthfulness on your background investigation there. So if you lied about anything, so um, again, there's not they're not going to have any surprise questions at the polygraph. You're going to see those in advance. They may be worded a little differently, but they're going to be the same context. Good, thank you. It sounds like the academy, academy may have been challenging, but I was assumed that it is the, that way to prepare you for law enforcement. Do you think that was the case? And what do you find most enjoyable about your new jobs as natural resources officers? Officer Thickpen. The academy is, um, Type two fun, if you've ever heard of that. It, it's one of those things that, like, in the moment, is not that enjoyable, but like, you look back and you have good memories about it. Um, there's going to be times in the academy that, like, are hysterical. And there's going to be moments where you're going to question, like, what am I doing? Um, but yeah, it's it's difficult for a reason because um, law enforcement is not an easy occupation, um, but it does prepare you well. Um, as far as what we do, uh, it's enjoyable being outside. It's enjoyable working with uh, the people that we serve. Um, being able to make sure that people are recreating safely uh, is, is something that I, I genuinely care about. Um, so when I get to go to work and I get to see people out boating or hiking and, um, and I'm the person they call if, if they need help, uh, I, I genuinely just enjoy it. Officer Scott. So I would agree with uh, Officer Thigpen that the difficulty at the Academy really does prepare you for the career. You learn and you know your stuff come out of that Academy and you're going to be pretty prepared for what you need to do. Um, honestly, I love this job. Um, 
everything about it's pretty is pretty awesome for me um you get to be outside all the time you're doing something different all the time so you're not you don't get stuck in that monotony and i really like the fact that we can do something different all the time once you're into your park and you've been there for a while at least for me you really start to take pride in your park and those areas you cover so being able to take care of that park keep the people visiting it safe it's a big source of pride for me i'm really proud that i'm able to do that thank you what were weekends like in the academy when you couldn't go home officer kent did you raise your arm okay officer kent go ahead um i would say the weekends on the academy uh they were still strict but you had some more freedom on the weekend. Um, hopefully that's not something that this next academy is going to have to be going through. But I mean, who really knows with how this COVID stuff is is going on? It could possibly be that way for you guys. Um, hopefully not. Um, but we did have options to order out. Um, we had uh, different restaurant choices each weekend and hopefully everybody could agree on uh, different meals and stuff like that but um we were taking temperatures every morning um before breakfast and uh kind of just staying on campus so good officer thickpen so emily Emily kind of alluded to it, like you weren't able to sleep in um, because you were getting your temperature taken. So that was kind of rough. But outside of that, you did have a good amount of freedom um, as far as what you did. Um, if you needed to catch up on laundry, you could do that. Um, you could kind of go outside and uh, listen to music or uh, play cornhole. Or I think someone even brought a, uh, a kitchenette to where they could cook outside. Um, so there was some freedom there. Uh, and you got I me, mean, you could work out. The gyms were, were typically open. Um, the food being ordered, ordering food was a, was a big deal. Um, to kind of reward yourself with uh, uh, a pizza or some Chipotle or things like that. Um, so the weekends weren't terrible aside from you still had to wake up and get your temperature taken. But after that, you could go back to sleep all day if you wanted to. Um, but you weren't forced to, to sit in your room. So uh, the weekends were, were a huge, huge relief. Thank you. So next question, I don't know much about your job, but find it interesting. I am an outdoor enthusiast, but never considered this occupation. What kind of things do you do each day? Officer Thigpen talked about patrolling. What does that mean? Are you on a boat? So just go into a little more detail when you talk about patrolling, you know, what does that entail? So who would like to grab that? Officer Thigpen? So patrolling, um, you're in your vehicle, whether it's a vessel or um, your SUV, like your interceptor, um, you're going to be checking your parks to make sure that uh, kind of nothing is uh, standing out as uh, suspicious. So like you're going to obviously have people that are recreating, but um, you're looking to make sure that people are, are abiding by the rules and regulations of the park. Um, and you're doing the same thing when you're on the water. You're making sure people are, are following the regulations um so the job itself if you're if you enjoy uh if you enjoy the outdoors that's a huge huge plus um understand you're still law enforcement um so think about that aspect of the job you don't want to take this job and then you get here and you're like well i didn't know i was signing up to be a cop because that, i mean you are so uh it's a huge plus if you're an uh, uh, outdoors person, um, but yeah, you're still going to do cop work on the job. You're going to you're still going to make traffic stops. You're still going to write citations. You're still going to write uh, make arrests. Um, you're still going to do some of the 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 hard jobs that uh, that come with law enforcement. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, being out, an outdoorsy person that'll help. Thank you, Officer Scott. 
Yeah, so just kind of to add on to what Officer Thigpen was talking about, we do enforce our park rules, we enforce watercraft laws, and we enforce criminal law. Uh, we also will go and back up other agencies as well. So we really do, we do get pretty heavy in the law enforcement side of things too, as well as the outdoors. You do have the opportunity, you can stop and talk to people about something in, something outdoors. So there's a bird someone's asking about, people might ask you about what kind of bird that is, or how the best boat, how to catch the best fish. I get asked fishing questions all the time. I try to answer the best I can. But so even if you're not as outdoorsy, but you're interested in the law enforcement side of things, this is also can be a really great career for you. You can really, you've got that room to make it what you want it to be. But you know, the patrolling aspects of that will be patrolling in vehicles, vessels, on foot, and you're just gonna be enforcing those laws, making sure everybody's safe running to calls, uh, backing up other agencies, and you're going to get call outs too from people are going to call ODNR and ask for an officer to come out and you'll come out and help them with whatever their issues are. Thank you, Officer Scott. What kind of schedule do you work? And I would actually like each one of you to, to touch on this. So Officer Tima, you want to kick it off? So I work four tens, uh, four ten hour shifts. Um, right now, uh, in field training, it's a little varied. So uh, my FTO right now, uh, we work seven A to five P, three days a week. And then on the weekend, we work a uh, twelve P to ten P to get some of that night traffic coming into the park. Uh, that shifts around a little bit depending on your FTO. So uh, my FTO right now, he's he's a big watercraft operator, so uh, he focuses on watercraft as far as park patrolling. Um, another FTO. I was with he uh, he's a, a parks a former parks officer so he's big into like the the park side of things so um, when I was working with him we were working until about I think it was at noon to ten and then uh, I'll switch up and I'll go to D'Angelo's uh, FTO with the canine so I'll be working his schedule but um, it, it's all over the latest I've worked so far is midnight uh, two p to midnight shift. Thank you, Officer Kent. Yeah, when I first came on, I was um, working probably, I think it was like 12 to 10 and then 2 to midnight for the first few weeks um, with my first FTO. And then I changed FTOs um, and was working day shift from 7A to 5P and I was doing four tenths for each of those. Um, and I'm just starting to switch up again and go back to uh, second shift, so I'll be working 12 to 10 again, but still working on four tens, um, which is really nice having three days off in a row. Thank you, Officer Thigpen. When I was uh, when I was originally hired, uh, we were still at peak season, so I work Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, the first two days of the week, I was working noon to 10, and then Friday and Saturday, I would work two to midnight. Um, we're kind of on our winter schedule, so I work 10 to 8, and then I work from 8 to 10 right now. So it's not a bad schedule. I actually enjoy it. Officer Scott. All right, so right now we're on our winter schedule as well, so I'm working 10-hour shifts of 7 to 5. I really enjoy the four 10-hour days because I get that three-day weekend. Uh, during the summer, we're usually working a Thursday to a Sunday during our peak season. Um, we'll have an officer on a day shift covered during the days. In Ottawa County, we have to have an officer go to court, so we have an officer covering court every Monday. And then we'll have officers on night shifts, either a 12 to 10. Um, the latest I've worked is a 5P to 3A or a 7P to 5A shift. That's usually when you're on the islands. Um, we, but we'll have officers cover both. If you end up shifting from more of a day shift to a night shift, you're going to be on that same shift for a while. You're not going to be getting bounced back and forth, so your sleep schedule won't be messed up terribly. You're going to have that time to acclimate and get used to your shift. Thank you. And it looks like we have one question left. What was the moment like for you and your family when you received the letter saying you made it to the academy? 
that all the work you did and sacrifice you made paid off into getting a great career. Officer Kent. I would say it was um, extremely exciting. It was a little overwhelming at the same time because uh, you also realize that there's still a whole lot of work to be done uh, to get to where you want to be. Um, but it was definitely an exciting uh, moment for everybody because uh, I would say that your successes are definitely your family's successes as well. So you carry uh, for them as well. Thank you. Would anybody else like to touch on that? Officer Scott. I would agree. It was a really exciting moment for me. Um, I had mixed emotions where I was incredibly excited and I was also relieved that I'd made it through that hiring process. I made it through that first really big hurdle into starting this career. Um, my family, my friends, Everybody was incredibly excited for me. It was a really good day when I got that call that I'd gotten the job. Good, thank you. All right, so we're seven minutes past our hour. Um, so before I close this down, we have no more questions in the Q&A. Would any of the officers that are on here, anything you would like to add before uh, we call it a day? Officer Kent. I would just say um, good luck to everybody uh, applying. Um, stay patient. Have a good attitude throughout the process and uh, hopefully we'll see you out in the field. All right, thank you for that. And with that, we're going to wrap this up. So again, I thank everyone for joining us today. And I uh, especially appreciate the officers taking time out of their schedule today um, to answer some questions and discuss the process. So have a great day. And again, thank you for joining us.